My name is Jim, and we're going to be talking about this little welder today on Lumanjaro. So when I was a young guy and I learned that you could use electricity to melt metal and stick things together and make stuff with it, I thought it was the coolest thing ever. So I did a little bit of welding in school and I quickly realized that not only did it take a fair amount of skill and a fair amount of training, but it also required a couple thousand dollars worth of equipment to be able to do. So fast forward 20 years or so, and I've still always wanted to weld. I watch a lot of uh, videos of people doing welding. I've seen people do it. It always sounds like a really neat thing to be able to do, but I've never felt like spending thousands of dollars to be able to learn it. And you know, also I've never had the time to have somebody show me how to do it as well. Recently though, there's been a couple, a line of new welders showing up on the market. They are very small and very inexpensive. And I figured maybe I'd pick one of those up try, see if just by watching videos online, reading some stuff about it, if I could figure out how to weld myself without having to take classes, without having to find somebody to teach me to weld. So that's what I did. I went out and got this Yes Welder ARC 205 DS. So this is a stick welder. Uh, I'm not gonna go into all the differences between the different types of welding. Just suffice it to say that stick welding is the cheapest type of welding. It's also probably one of the hardest types of welding. One of the nice things about it though is it's pretty versatile. It doesn't work so well on thin materials, but it does work very well on thicker materials, although this welder's not powerful enough to do really thick materials. But it's nice because it doesn't require any gases to go with it. The rod, the sticks that you use have flux around them, and that shields your weld as you're going along, so you don't need a bottle of, of argon or whatever shielding gas to go with this. So you don't need to go find that anywhere, and you don't have to have the expense of a big gas bottle to go with it. Let's talk a little bit about this welder specifically. Now this isn't gonna be a review on this welder because I'm not qualified to do that, but I just wanna go over a little bit about what it is and what you get with it, just so you're aware of what you're getting for, they're about $100 online now. So this is the 205 amp version. They also make a 160 amp version that's a little bit cheaper. This is a little bit of a uh, older one. They've since changed the color on it, although I believe the internals are all the same. So the newer ones are all black and red. This one is a, a blue color, but everything else about it looks to be about the same. So in the box, you get the welder itself. You get a six foot power cord on here, which is nice and beefy because it's gonna be pulling a lot of power. You get a negative ground clamp on here. The clamp itself is not super nice, but it does have a fairly long cable. It's about 10 feet long, which can be pretty handy if you're fairly far from an outlet. You get a positive lead, which holds your, your uh, six here like this. It seems reasonably nice. It's, I'm sure it's not you know, the best thing in the world, but it, it works well enough. I don't have the, the sticks sliding around on it in there a lot, so that works pretty well. And they clamp in pretty nicely. I haven't had any issues with them coming out or anything. Now the controls on the welder are very basic. You basically just have your power knob here, and that's it. There's a switch on the back to turn it on, and a little display that tells you uh, how many amps you're putting out. There's one more light that'll tell you if you've overheated it. So this is not a professional welder. It's not meant to be run uh, you know, 100% at full power all the time. It's gonna overheat if you do that. But for you know, kind of mid-range at like 150 amps, seems to run perfectly well. You, know, you can run through a whole stick and it doesn't have any problems or anything. So this, amp, this welder will run on 110 volt or 220 volt. There's a little adapter that they give you here. You plug the regular 110 volt uh, power into this and then you can plug this into your 220 volt outlet. I haven't used it with that. I've only used it with 110 volt and I'll say it works just fine on that although it probably uh, at the higher amperage levels it doesn't work so well it will end up tri tripping the breaker. Um, it does seem to overheat pretty quickly at those amperages but I've ran it at about 150 amps you know you're able to run a full stick through it without a problem so on 110 volts, perfectly usable, probably not at the, the 200 amps is the maximum for this unit though. If you're gonna use that, you really are gonna to need to go up to the 220 volt. Now, the other thing you do get is a little brush here and a little slag knocker offer thingy. Um, it's pretty much a piece of junk, but you know, if you just happen to have it, it's the only thing you got, it'll work all right. If you think you can just go out and buy one of these $100 welders and go and start welding and not have to spend too much money, you may be in for a bit of a shock when you realize you need to buy all this extra stuff you're gonna spend almost twice that before you're able to actually do any welding. Now, the first thing that you need to buy is a welding helmet. So this will protect your eyes and face from the, the arc of the weld. This is also made by Yes Welder. It's their Welding Helmet Pro. It was about $60. I really like it because it has a nice big viewing area. I'm sure it's not as nice as some of the fancier helmets, but it works well enough. It darkens very quickly to protect your eyes, but when it's not dark, you can see pretty well what you're doing. It's like having a pair of sunglasses on. It's not too bad. I believe some of the fancier ones are a lot clearer to see through, but this one works well enough. Now I will say that the strap that's on the back um, has broken on me once already, so it's certainly not the highest quality helmet, but for me, it's gonna work just fine. 
So that was about $60. Then you need to buy some gloves for another $20. You need gloves for two reasons. First off, you've got to protect your hands from the heat of the parts. You know, if you want to grab one of the parts after you just welded, it's going to be super hot. So you need some gloves to protect that. You also need gloves to protect your hands and your wrists. You know, these go up pretty far from all the UV light that comes off the arc. That light can give you a pretty bad sunburn pretty quickly. So if you're going to do any amount of welding for any period of time, you need to protect all of your exposed skin from that. So you got to wear a long sleeve, have long pants on, all that stuff to protect you from that UV light. So then you also want to have a hammer to knock the slag off and a nice brush to clean it up. So that's another $20 there. Then you need to buy some welding rods, right? So there's two different type, types that are commonly available here. There's 6013 and 7018. Um, I'm not going to go into all the differences of, between them. I don't really know the differences. I will say though that the 6013 works a lot, is a lot easier to use. So if you're just starting out, that seems to be the one that, to get. And there's plenty of different sizes available depending on what you're going to weld. And the last thing you need to is some sort of table, some sort of surface to, to actually do the welding on. What I've got here is just a sheet of steel. It's about an eighth inch thick, and I've just got that laid over my workbench. That seems to work fairly well. Um, I do have to be careful, though, if I heat it up in one spot too much, it's going to burn the, the wood that's underneath it. So I do have to be careful about that. It would certainly be better to have a dedicated metal table that I didn't have to worry about that on. And then lastly, of course, you need something to actually weld. So the nice thing about stick welding is it doesn't really care if you have particularly rusty metal, so it doesn't have to be nice pristine steel. So the easiest thing, if you're going to be practicing, just go to a junkyard, grab some old steel, clean it up a little bit with a grinder, and then you can start practicing. I figured I should actually show you some welding here, despite how terrible I am at it. Now, I've run a couple pounds of uh, sticks through here, haven't had anybody show me how to do anything, just learned by watching YouTube videos. I've done a couple projects and I've been able to actually get stuff to stick together, so it's been a bit of a success. So I'm going to show you here, I've got just two little scraps of quarter inch steel. I've got a little bit of bevel on them and I'm going to weld them together here. Um, I've got a welding rod here, it's 6013, it's an eighth inch thick, and I'm going to have my welder set for about 130 amps, which is on the high side, but I found it's a little easier to get going and everything when it's on the high side of the amperage range for kind of the thickness of the metal and the rod that I'm using here. So the first thing I'm going to say though is on this welder here, they've got this little plastic cover that's on here. Um, this is the only real problem I've had with this welder. This stupid cover is very difficult to flip open when you've got welding gloves on. I wish they had kind of arranged things a little differently here so that if you've got thick gloves on, it's still easy to change the settings on here and to open the cover to be able to do that. So I'm going to set this up now and then uh, I'll run a bead across here and you can laugh at how bad my welds are. my weld there. I'm pretty happy with how that turned out. As always, I had a lot of difficulty getting the arc to start. But once it gets started, it's pretty straightforward. Um, I did have one little spot there where I lost the arc for a second, so I got a little pinhole there. Not the biggest deal. You know, this doesn't have to look pretty. The pieces are nicely stuck together. I've got some pretty decent penetration, so I'm pretty happy with it. I don't know that I would stake my life on it. I'm not going to go welding on my car or anything, but for the kind of stuff that I've been doing lately works just fine. So can you just go pick up a dirt cheap welder, watch a couple of YouTube videos, and teach yourself how to weld? Well, yes and no. You can, obviously I've got these two pieces stuck together, and you know I haven't had all that much practice with it, but it has been a fairly frustrating process. I think you're gonna be a lot better off if you go find somebody that can show you how to weld. I think you can make do just fine with one of these cheap welders, but having somebody to tell you what you're doing wrong, how fast you should be going, how slow you should be going, what your setting should be, I think would be tremendously helpful. Keep in mind that this flat little plate here is a fairly ideal situation here. It's fairly thick, quarter inch steel here, and it's flat and straight. I'm at a very nice working position here. Now, if you have to do something like this, I was doing this recently where I wanted to weld one tube kind of butted up against another tube. It was a lot more difficult because this piece here had you know, a continuous edge here and that needed a lot more heat on this side than it did on this side. So that was pretty tricky. This is all so thinner, so a quarter inch is fairly easy to, to deal with. You don't have to worry about blowing through too much. This is only eighth inch tubing. 
And with that, you have to worry if you put too much heat in it, it's just gonna melt away the part that you're working on. That's not great. And anything below that is gonna, thinner than an eighth inch is gonna be even more difficult to weld. And then of course, if you've got to weld up like the vertical seam here, if you can't turn it so that's laying flat, that's a whole nother level of difficulty. And then if you're you know, trying to weld something in, in situ where you, you know, can't position it and you've got to kind of be a kind of an odd angle, that's even more difficult. So if you, know, you can position your work fairly easily, you can get a decent weld without too much difficulty. If it's a little bit harder, uh, if it's you know, a thinner piece of material, it's gonna be a lot harder. So I'd highly recommend if you've got somebody you know who can weld, you should certainly seek them out and grab one of these welders and get them to teach you. It can be a very useful uh, skill to have. Uh, as for the welder itself, like I said, I'm not really qualified to tell you just how good of a welder it is. It seems perfectly fine to me. I've watched a bunch of other YouTube videos about them and folks who actually know what they're doing seem to think they're fairly decent as well. Um, they're really nice because they're so small. So if you do know how to weld, you can throw this in your truck. You don't have to worry about having some big generator. You can just plug it into a 110 volt outlet. You know, it's easy to move around. It's got fairly long leads. So you can you know, get to spots where you need to fix things without too much difficulty, without having to wheel around the whole cart. So it can be pretty convenient for that sort of thing. So if you like this video, if you have some other tips for welding, leave them in the comments below. Otherwise, give me a thumbs up and thanks for watching.